Visit sayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sayarite. Today we're going to show you how to build a California Dodger. A California Dodger is basically a bimini top on a two-bow frame with side curtains and a front curtain panel that zips onto it so you can remove any curtain that you want. If you want to just go with the front curtain and the side curtains removed, you can do that. It is a mostly a clear vinyl application, not as much canvas. This California Dodger uh, comes in a skin kit and underneath is a frame that supports it. It is available as a Tubo Dodger frame kit. And it's the same frame kit that we use for our standard Dodgers. So that is the process. Let's get started and show you how to make this California Dodger. This is part three of a three-part video. The top and the front curtain have already been done. Now we're gonna concentrate on the side curtains. In order to start patterning of the side curtains, go ahead and install the top and the front curtain. Then we'll use some Duraskrim and pattern for the side curtains. I'm measuring almost all the way to the winch, though there will be a winch handle. And you can see 55 inches would give us plenty of pattern material for this. And then for the height, I'll measure up to that zipper. You can see the stitching there on the top. If I go 38 inches, which is down here close to the deck, that'll be big enough for this pattern. So we've cut the Duraskrim pattern material to an oversize of 38 by 55, which we measured on the boat. Now we're gonna uh, strike a line across the top to make sure it's perfectly straight. We'll need to do this both for the port side and the starboard side. This is the zipper that we sewed onto the top, the other half, and it has a starter post. I'm gonna put a quarter inch uh, seam stick for canvas and upholstery along the outer edge of the zipper's flange. And then we're gonna baste it to the middle of this long length. I think it was 55 or something like that. I can't remember for sure. And I'm not gonna measure. I'm just gonna guess at the middle position because this is oversized. So I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper. Now, one of the things that we wanna do is we want to make sure that this is um, the same distance along this edge. So again, I'm going to put it so that it's about an eighth inch or so away from the teeth, like that. See the, the distance, the space there? And we're going to make sure that it's that way and along the whole length. I'm going to sew in straight stitch, maximum stitch length, needle and, um, well, we may move this but I am gonna reduce the upper tension because we don't need a lot of tension for this. All we're trying to do is make sure this zipper stays on while we pattern. So I'm gonna put that presser foot here, which is perfect. And we'll sew with the needle. Yeah, the needle's fine where it's at. No reversing because we're gonna have to take this off later. We will make one of these for the starboard side and one for the port side in the same manner. And then we'll take it to the boat and start patterning. Now that the zipper is sewn onto the pattern material, it's time to pattern the side curtain for our boat. So I'm on the inside here and I have the starter post and this is where the starter box is. I'm gonna go ahead and zip the pattern material to this zipper that we've already installed in the top. Now there's no stop on this, so again, I'm gonna pull the slider all the way off and just keep it. You'll need to pattern both the port side and the starboard side separately. They will not be the same. I'm gonna drape the pattern material just on top of the top right now because we have to put double-sided tape down here. So the Dodger that was on here before was not a California Dodger, but we still have the fasteners for it. And I'm going to try to use those fasteners. I might have to put in different fasteners, but I'm going to try to use those. We have a twist lock over here and I'm going to put the pattern or put the double-sided tape uh, right above these fasteners, kind of following the general contour. And I'm gonna go all the way to about here. The double-sided tape doesn't determine the bottom of the patterning material, it's just gonna hold it in place. Uh, this I'm gonna have come down around here instead of going up to here. So this, I'm not gonna go to that twist lock. I'm gonna come down here and come around because I wanna close off as much as this is possible. So I'll start here. This may take off some of the, uh, the teak finish. So you want to test, obviously, if, you, if that's important to you, you may want to think of a different alternative method, maybe putting strapping tape down. There we go. 
So now we can peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue on both these strips. But we've got the top attached to the zipper already, so we basically have a, a general shape. So what I want to do is I want to pull snug. Look how nice that's looking already. And I want to baste it to the double-sided tape. That's looking pretty good. Oops. If you had a second helper, it'd even be better. But I don't, as usual. Now this we know is excess because it's in the way and the wind is blowing it. It's not the calmest day. It's not the roughest day either. So I'm going to cut it, leaving um, basically right along the clear vinyl so that I don't cut away too much. Okay, and that keeps that from fluttering around in the wind. I'm going to come back here to try to stay out of the way of the camera. Put my pad down so I don't hurt my knees. go. We're going to come out here and follow this. Okay, so we're getting this in, in a place that's pleasing without wrinkles. And if we do have wrinkles, we peel it up and we adjust. Okay, so are we happy with that? Does it need to be adjusted? Here's the winch handle. And we know that's going to get in the way if I, if I have the uh, curtain come past that. So we're probably going to have the curtain end right about here. So I'm going to hold this. We're going to come down here. And I want to basically put a mark leaving enough area away from that winch handle. So right here, I'm going to put a mark. And then we want the enclosure to basically, there's the zipper, ends right there. It would be nice if it would actually come to here. So I'm going to mark where this tube is right here, just with a mark coming down. And then where do we want it to end at this deck? I'm not going to strike a line straight down because it's better to do that at the uh, table because you can make sure your lines are nice and straight. So if I pull on this and I make sure this is secured down, it evidently came up a little bit. I would probably want it to end right about there. So I'm going to put a stop mark there. And then we'll make this come down either straight or even with a curve, but I, straight is easier. Okay, so now the bottom edge, this has no snaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where the top of this trim is. And then we need to add, obviously, enough area for fasteners. So I'm just going to take my hand across it like this and I'm holding my hand in such a way that it's pretty easy to follow the edge. And we will have snaps in there. So I'm gonna mark, um, let's see, I'm probably gonna go one inch. We may change that. So I'm marking an arrow with one inch upside down. We've already marked this with uh, P up here, but I want to mark pout. So this is the outside. So see how this is loose in here? Well, there's going to be a zipper here. So when you pull it like that, that'll tighten up. But our, our snap positions should be pretty good with the about the right amount of tension here. So I'm going to mark uh, the snaps that are currently in the boat. If you didn't have snaps, you would obviously just say, hey, I want to snap here, here, wherever you'd like one. This snap is a good location to make that transfer. And then we have to, I'm gonna do mark the edge of this wood here so I know where it stops. And then we'll come down here. We have one inch added here because snaps have to go here. But here, we want basically the canvas to be like that, which is about, which is about one inch away from the, the snaps. And we really want it to run into the corner 
of this canvas here. We really want it to run into the corner of this canvas, so I'm going to mark the canvas corner here. So this right here is the corner of our front curtain. What I can do is I can pull this taut. I don't, I almost don't have enough material, but I have, I have enough. If I just mark where this, uh, this uh, flange is located, then I know I just need to move it in one and one quarter inch to the center of the, of the uh, zipper's teeth. So I'll put center of zip. And uh, again, a second person could be helpful in this regard, but I'm gonna try to do this myself. I'm just gonna mark that all the way down. When I get down here, I'm gonna run out of pattern material, but that's okay, because we'll just use that edge. So right there, and then past here, I'm gonna mark it here because we have more pattern material. There we go. So now we have, now when that's taut, that's right against that edge, which will give us a nice look. Okay, so clear vinyl versus canvas or a umbrella. Uh, we don't need the, the uh, glass to go any, further than this because that gives us good visibility and yet I'm worried about this area because glass doesn't like to take a curve like that but the canvas will. So if I come over here and if I follow this rail and then come over here and when we get past that transition come down because we do like to see here and be just above this rail with glass I think that would be pleasing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark roughly, now this is not straight at all, kind of our general plan. Now, see, canvas will take curves better than, than uh, the glass will. So hopefully the fabric will allow this to happen and the glass will still sit pretty nice. And then obviously we're gonna have a, a two inch flange over there. So patterning is, is done for the port side. We'll do the same thing for the starboard side because it's not asymmetrical. We're gonna unzip it uh, and uh, we're gonna remove it from the double side tape and make sure you take the double side tape off of your boat right away so it doesn't stick permanently. If it doesn't come off well, use a 3M specialty adhesive remover and a rag. Our pattern's on the table, and this is where the winch handle was, and this is where we marked where we want it to stop. So let's see, does this line up? Yeah, it lines up almost perfectly. If it didn't line up, I would probably make it line up so that it was straight, because straight's always easier than curved, though you could make a curve if you'd like. So that'll be our stop point. Now we do need to mark where the zippers end. So this is the end. And this is uh, the side with the post. I'm gonna call this the post of zipper. Right there. Uh, we can mark this bottom edge a little bit to, to know exactly where the zipper was because we're gonna be reusing this zipper. We're gonna take it off of this. Okay, so that's the flange. This is the edge that has one and a quarter inch over from that. So we're going to use our clear acrylic ruler. And uh, if it changes, which it might, uh, we're going to follow this uh, line because we pretty much struck it right on the line. So I'm gonna go here. That's one and a quarter from the line. That's still on the line. Looks like it's on the line there. And comes in a little bit there and then down to here we need to go past that point so one and a quarter curves in a little bit there so right there there now this is a little bit tricky here let's see one and a quarter right like that so I'm going to do it like that and transition into that okay Okay, these lines stop up here, but or this line stops up here, but I want to have it go all the way up here so that th this is one whole piece. So I'm going to move that line all the way to the top because it's in line with the zipper where it's going to be sewn on. Here's my snap location, and I roughly drew the bottom edge. We want to be about three-quarter inch from the bottom of the snap. So I'm going to measure and put a solid line underneath each snap that is exactly the same. Uh, right there. And then three quarter inches from this is right 
there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to freehand something that's nice and pleasant, a solid line going basically from there. Now this isn't straight. I don't want it straight because I want the snaps to basically be all the same distance from the edge. And then we're going to, this is the corner we talked about, so I'm going to freehand to that corner because I want it to be even with the other panel. And that's about perfect. Now this will come over, so this, since this is the corner, this is going to come over like that. Now here's that wooden piece, and we wanted to add one inch to that. So now this line sh should be in the, about the right spot, but if it's a little bit crooked, I'm going to I'm going to go with my ruler rather than following that line because that wood is pretty much straight. So this is one inch away from that. Uh, any tr major transitions, I'm just going to make it so that it's not. It does curve up here, so we have to follow that curve. Da -da 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 one inch and then curves in a little bit. And right there. And then it looks like Let's see, one inch from there. So that looks like just about right. So we should have a spot for new snaps along this. So this is the general location of the window. That we're going to make that all seem a little bit more consistent. So I'm going to again use a clear acrylic ruler and use a reference line. And I'm going to say, OK, the window stops there. Uh, we are going to still have it curved like this because it'll look good. So it's going to curve up to here. I'm going to put an X on that because we're not going to follow that. And we're going to curve into this like that. Put an X on that, X on this. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to basically uh, draw a straight line. Uh, do I want it straight? Yeah, I think I do. There's no right or wrong answer here. Um, Let's see, yeah, I think I'm just going to go like this, right into that curve that we have, and come over here and go like this. Now the window's not going to go all the way to there, but that should give us a nice, pleasing look. Okay, we're just going to cut on those lines that we struck, and this will be our pattern for the port side. And after it's cut out on those lines, now what are we going to do up here? Let's, let's go to this one. This is where the center of the zipper is. And I think I'm not going to cut on this because that's obviously not our pattern. I'm going to cut on this and remember that this is the center of the zipper. We marked it. If, if you can see over there, it says center of zipper. So we'll know that this is the zipper side. Okay, we're going to turn this around because I like to work from the back side of the table. Now, this is canvas and this is glass, and uh, we're going to have to pattern them differently. So I'm going to cut this out. Obviously, uh, they will fit together uh, like a puzzle in the future when we need it. So I'm going to separate the canvas from the glass portion at the bottom only. Now we can use the pattern material to pattern the fabric. Now we have the umbrella on the table. We don't need this part. This part's going to be the clear vinyl. We'll set that aside. Don't throw it out. And we're going to start with this bottom side. So we're going to lay it on this uh, umbrella fabric. So along this top edge, we're going to have a half inch hem. So I'm still going to cut along this top edge. I'll just make sure that I have enough material so that I can drop this down about a half inch uh, from that edge. So I can either use a uh, marking utensil and mark uh, along this edge or I can actually just use a hot knife and that's what I think I'm going to do. If you use a hot knife then make sure you put a weighted um, sandbag on it and then put your tempered cutting glass underneath. So I'm not going to cut the bottom edge. I'm only going to cut the top edge at this point so that I can drop it down a half inch. So uh, here on the sides, I can cut up. Let me do that. So then I'm just going to use the hot knife and cut very close to this uh, edge of the uh, Duraskrim pattern material. And I'll move my tempered cutting glass uh, when it comes uh, time to fall off of the tempered cutting glass. 
along this edge I want it to go a little bit long because we do have to drop it down a half inch so I'm just kind of prolonging or, or extending that a little bit so okay now that we have that cut let's take this away and we'll use this in a minute again we'll take this down and we will drop it down about a half inch in order to get a half inch here and here, that means I have to kick it over. So what I should have done is I should have extended this beyond here and then determined where that was going to be cut. But we're so close here that I think we're going to be fine because we're right on. So we were lucky with our pattern, but uh, I should have left extra fabric and then cut it after I dropped it a half inch. So now once it's dropped a half inch, we're going to put a weighted bag back on this and we're going to use a hot knife and we're going to cut along this edge. There is no additional added here. We already added for fasteners and such here. Now later on we're going to be using binding along this edge, uh, but I still like to use a hot knife here because the hot knife, uh, if the stitch gets too close to the edge, the hot knife edge doesn't typically give way. Next up, we'll add the vinyl reinforcement fabric to the underside. So now we have our shelter right on the table and I'm going to take this and put it on top of the shelter right. We need a strip of shelter right to reinforce the snaps and um, I'm going to do a two inch strip to make sure that the snaps fall within the reinforcement and that's only along the bottom side. So I can move the uh, pattern material and just use this umbrella for this because it has a pretty nice edge that we can follow. So I'm going to come up here and then come up here. This should get me in the two inch range. And then I'm just going to trace along this umbrella. No, don't worry if you get marking on your umbrella because this is going to be bound later on. Um, and we're going to go uh, about two inches up this other side. So let me show you. And I don't care what side of the uh, sh shelter right you use, the doll side or the shiny side, doesn't matter. Went up about two inches there. We can move this and we're gonna cut that out. All right, since I'm using the Sarah Camus patterning ruler on vinyl, again, I'm gonna use uh, some uh, McLube and a rag because it makes it glide effortlessly. And we are gonna put this on the edge and we're gonna mark it at two inches and follow the contour. Oops, I wasn't on the edge. We're gonna follow the contour of that edge. If I get to an inside curve like this, sometimes you can follow it. Sometimes it's good to just skip it and then draw that in by hand. So if I skip it like this, then I can just kind of like <coughs> follow it like that. Okay, on that side that was up, we're going to put double-sided tape down both long edges following the shape of the uh, shelter right material. And then we're going to baste it to the bottom side of this umbrella to uh, reinforce for fasteners. So now we're going to take this and we're going to lay it on top. And I like to start where there's some contour shape so I know approximately where it should, should fit. Just like that. And hopefully, if you've done it right, it should go down with very little trimming necessary or adjusting and it should lay nice and flat. So it is nice and flat. There's a little bit of white sticking out here and uh, that's just a little bit of inconsistency when I was cutting. You can see my black line. So I'm just going to trim that away because I want that binding to encase both of these materials well. Okay, we're going to make sure our machine's in straight stitch, six millimeter stitch length. I'm going to sew with the shelter right up. This is the wrong side and I'm going to put my stitch close to this edge. There's no reason to do more than one stitch in this. This is not uh, going vertical or going from horizontal to vertical. I'm going to put my needle in the left position uh, to get close to that stitch. I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning and we'll just follow that edge. And I should check the tension on the underside. I've been away from the machine for a few days and I'm not sure if anybody touched it. 
Oh yeah, she looks good. Hemming the canvas edge and sewing it to the window is next. Along this edge, we're gonna have a half inch hem. Now this is a curvy edge and we'll have to cut slits in that for this. But I'm gonna mark it at one inch so I know approximately where that uh, half inch hem will fall. And I'm gonna use the uh, uh, Sarah Canvas patterning ruler to do so. When I get to the curve, it's a little bit tricky to go around the curve. So what I'll do is I'll just skip the curve and I'll freehand that. We will be placing binding over the top of this, and those two curves are rather sharp. So later on, we'll actually be cutting them down slightly so that it's easier to apply the binding. We'll show that in a little bit. Now, before we cut the slits in for the curves, let's go ahead and put double-sided tape close to that raw edge. This is the uh, 3 8 inch double-sided tape. We're going to have to uh, make it... Um, kinked at the corners because it has to take that shape and shrink and expand. So we're going to put this on and then we'll show you how to cut the uh, slits. Again, we don't want to cut the slits yet. We want to take off the transfer paper because otherwise you have to take transfer paper off of the each slit that you create. So we're going to remove that. Now we're going to cut the slits, but we're not going to go uh, deeper than a half inch. You don't need to really. So at the curve, you need to cut slits approximately every quarter inch or so. And I'm not measuring anything. I'm just guessing at approximately a little less than a half inch. They don't have to be straight. They just have to be cut in. And then we'll show you what's next. So now we can fold it over to the line that we struck. Um, I don't necessarily need the line. I could have guessed it a half inch because it doesn't have to be perfect for this. And when we get to the corners, these relief slits that we have will allow the fabric to stretch on the inside turn and um, shrink up on the outside turn. So see how that worked right there? Got a pretty nice edge. And then we're gonna use this to make sure that it's pressed down well and let's do the outside edge. Now see, this one has to shrink up so these slits will basically overlap each other. And if, if it takes too sharp of a turn, then you can create more slits. Like right here, this is, this is pretty sharp, so I'm gonna cut in a little bit. I'm just gonna make it look as nice as possible. There, that looks really good. Doesn't matter what it looks like on this side, what matters is what's it look like on that side. All right. After looking at this curve, after we've got this in place, before I put the double-sided tape on top, this is a pretty sharp curve. This one's gradual, but this one will be hard for the binding to take that. And to do this isn't gonna change the pattern because this is basically just determining where the canvas starts and stops. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. This will just make it easier for the binding. Because a curve like that, the binding is not going to want to take that as easily. So I'm going to open that up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, my pencil and instead of going, so this is my one inch, um, or my yeah, my one inch line. I'm going to make this more gradual, and that will allow the uh, binding to basically take that better. So we're going to cut right here. And um, I used a hot knife. I think I'll use a hot knife again. Let's see, that's a little bit sharp. We're going to go down like that. There we go. So now I'm going to put the double-sided tape back on this. And we're going to cut some relief slits in this just like we did before, and I'll show you what it looks like. So because we're gonna duplicate this on the uh, starboard side, we're going to use some of our scrap pattern material, and I'm gonna place it on top of this. I'm gonna make um, basically a little uh, template so that we can have the same sort of shape on the other side, and we'll just keep this the process is going to be the same for making it, 
but how do I get this? Well, this is a perfect way to do it. So here's what it looks like when we're done, a gradual turn for the binding to take. And now we're gonna put double-sided tape on that. This kind of helps to hold everything in place. Uh, this will be used to uh, base the glass to the canvas. I have my glass on the table and I have my uh, canvas piece. You know, we changed this, but that's not a big deal. We just wanna lay it uh, basically on top with about a half inch seam allowance. And we wanna cut the glass to the general size with about an inch extra around the entire perimeter. So I'm just gonna cut up here because we're just basically trying to get a sheet of glass that's bigger. And we're gonna cut about an inch up there and over here to make it to, in our general size that we need. So I have plenty of clear vinyl going around the entire perimeter and I have my canvas piece on. We only really need glass to go a half inch, but the easiest way to do this is to turn your canvas piece over, take off the double-sided tape that we put on there. Then we can just basically position this with our piece up there, down flat. We have plenty on both sides. We have plenty of glass over here. We'll move that out of the way and then baste it down so that it's nice and flat. And then confirm that if the pattern were, oops, see, the pattern is askew. So I've got it in the wrong spot. I need to move it over here so that I have plenty of clear vinyl. So it's got to be on like that. So I'm going to peel it up and rebaste it. Okay, so now I have my pattern in the right spot. Let's rebase this again um, and make sure that we are like that. Two ends, baste it down and check one more time. Oops, make sure my hems are folded under. And now when we take this and put it on top, um, we should have plenty of material everywhere. We flip this over to this side and um, we trim off the excess. Now we just need no more than one inch. This is our binding. We want that binding to cover the glass so the glass can't go beyond an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just below my hem all along this edge. Make sure you don't cut your canvas. Now we're going to put uh, the double-sided tape on top of the clear vinyl, not going over that um, edge that you can see through, because we don't want this double-sided tape to be exposed. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue along the entire perimeter, then put your down your one inch bias binding. We're going to go a little bit long. We're going to make sure this edge is flush as we put it on. When you go around the turns, it's gonna to have to shrink up and expand a little bit, but the turns are gradual, so it should be quite possible to do this. One thing you can do at a turn is put double-sided tape, uh, an extra double-sided tape at the turn if you'd, if you'd like, so that you can make sure that it stays in place. But I think this is gonna be pretty easy for us to do without having to do that. That's a little trick if your turns are sharp. So you can see this side needs to shrink up a little bit. And so I try to work those out with my finger and then I, I can use the canvas patterning ruler and press those down. And that sometimes helps to basically remove those wrinkles. When you sew them, they should be uh, totally eliminated. If it's off a little bit, I can move this over or put more double-sided tape on it to hold it in place. So I think we're almost ready for sewing. So you can see I rolled up the uh, vinyl um, so th that I can start sewing and I have my needle in the left position and I have the outside foot close to the edge of that binding so my stitch is really close to that raw edge. And uh, we can just sew, I'm going to turn down the worker bee a little bit. No reason to do any reversing here. We're going to have side binding that goes on. Now we're starting to run into the throw of the sewing machine, but this is a pretty light assembly, so I think it's actually going to go in pretty well. It's 
still lined up, I think. Yep. Okay, right here we're a little bit off, so I'm going to kind of pull that over because it's not been sewn yet. We've just basted. I'll hold it down. And then we have to start making this gradual turn. I'm running a little bit. I'm going to fold my material just like this because I... Looking good so far. A little bit off here. I'm going to straighten this out. Looking pretty good. Now the material is running into the back of the sewing machine over here, so I'm actually going to come over here to the back side and curl it up so that I don't have that problem like that. Now here we have some substantial wrinkles here that I'm going to try to work out before I get to them. So I'm going to distribute them a little bit because it has to shrink up a little. And you can always use more basting tape if you if you want to make sure that it's uh, laying exactly how you like it. I actually think that's pretty good. That should sew pretty much out. The wrinkles are kind of flattened. So we're sewing over those wrinkles and it should flatten them out. Might get one or two wrinkles, but it won't be terrible. I'll show you what it looks like when we're done doing this. Just following that edge, now the rest is easy. As I promised, we had wrinkles here, but look how nice it turned out. Now we just have to sew the other side in kind of like the same manner. And uh, we don't think we need to show all this, but we are going to move the needle to the right. And we're going to sew on the opposite side of the center foot as our guide beside this uh, binding. So let's just show you getting started and then you'll pretty much know exactly what we're doing. Hold those trailing threads and start sewing here. So this is exactly the same process. So as you can see, the bias binding took that uh, curve pretty well. A few little dinky wrinkles, but they really do look nice. And there's what it looks like from the outside. We'll cut the clear window material a little bit oversized, then we'll cut it to size. So I'm going to take some packing tape and I'm going to tape this bottom right where it's supposed to be in just a couple spots because this is our what our final size is supposed to be. So if, if you do it right you should have all the lines running into each other. The, the lines in the Duraskrim that is. I'm going to flip this so that we're working from the outside. Probably doesn't matter much. But now this should match up and we want it to be lined up along the bottom edge. And remember our glass is oversized. So I'm going to put a clear acrylic ruler on this just to hold down the pattern material. And you can see this is the center of the zipper. So this edge is actually um, right where the center of the zipper falls. So I'm just going to put dash lines on this. We're going to cut it, but then we're also going to take away a half inch after we're done cutting it because we, uh, the zipper is going to add some size to it. So if you remember right, this edge with the zipper on is perfectly straight. So I can take a line here and, uh, and then put one on this side as well. So if I hold this down and I put a line right here at the edge of the pattern material, and then I'm also going to say this is where my zipper ends and this is where my zipper begins here. And also this side is perfectly straight, so I can put a mark there and I can come down to the bottom and put a mark here. 
right like that, and we will strike a line uh, on that edge as well. So now the pattern can be moved. We'll start with this edge, and I will strike a line. Okay, and then we'll do the top edge because that's pretty easy. Straight line for the zipper from mark to mark, right there. And this side we're going to cut and then we're going to move it over a half inch. So I definitely want to follow these dash lines as I go. This is not straight. Um, anytime that you have a zipper going up and down from one panel to the other, uh, typically it's usually not straight because we marked it when it was on the boat. So I'm going to cut along the straight line at the top and the straight line aft. We're going to use the Sayrite Canvas Patterning Ruler. There's a half inch mark line here and I'm just going to follow that edge and be as careful as possible to make sure that it uh, marks it a half inch. And then we'll cut this away. If anything, I want to cut a little bit inside of the half inch to make it a little bit smaller than a half inch. So yeah, am I cutting on the black line? Yeah, but I'm being a little bit, uh, I'm going a little bit that way up the line. Next up, sewing zippers on the curtain. We're going to break about every third or fourth stitch uh, on the zipper that's on the pattern material because we're going to reuse it at the top. So we're going to remove this zipper. The starter goes here towards the front, so we need to make sure the starter post is over here. It doesn't matter if this zipper goes underneath or on top, the seam sticks on this side, so it's going to go underneath for us because we're going to put binding on both sides to give it a great, beautiful look. So I'm going to just reuse that, that seam stick on here, making sure that it's lined up and we want the same distance from the teeth all the way across here. So you can strike a line if you'd want or you can just eyeball it. Just try to make sure it goes on straight. And we want that distance to be about like that from the teeth. This is the top edge and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a seam stick so that it's not exposed. We want to make sure that it's buried. Well, it doesn't really matter because the binding is going to actually take care of this. So it can be exposed, never mind. So we're going to put this over the top of this edge here and then I am going to peel off the backing and I'm going to put the binding on right above that edge of that glass right here. So it's going to extend beyond this side a little bit and it's going to go right alongside the edge of the clear vinyl underneath it. And then we're just going to cut the ends with uh, scissors uh, because they are not the finished size yet. So right here we'll cut it a little teeny bit long. Then we're going to flip it over, put uh, double sided tape um, right along the zipper, not going too close to the teeth. This is the 3 8 inch double sided tape and we're going to put this binding on in the same manner uh, making sure that it's even with that bottom edge that we can see through. So it goes on a little bit long just like that. So we're flush with the back side. Beautiful zipper application. Okay, this process is done just like all the other processes. So we're going to sew really close to that edge with our stitch in the right position. And no reason to do any reversing. We are going to have material that comes down the sides. This catches the zipper. Notice how I rolled the material up so that I could get it in front of me. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for sewing. Now, one thing I need to do is I need to reverse into the zipper ends, and I didn't really do that on the other side. I should have done that. Um, I'm going to probably go back and do that. So, reverse it several times and then sew past. No need to reverse at the end, though. Okay, I put the pattern back on top because we have to determine where that zipper stopped. And I didn't show it in the video, but we actually marked the stop position for where the zipper on the side begins, which is right there. So this is the uh, end with the starter post. 
Let's go ahead and cut this with just scissors following the contour of the glass so that it's flush. And this can go either on the underside or the top side, doesn't really matter because again we're going to have binding on both sides. I'm going to put the quarter inch seam stick along the edge of this flange. This is the one that we took off of the uh, front curtain. Now this is too long and I don't care about that. I'm going to leave it long. I'm not going to cut it short down here. We'll determine that on the boat. It will take off. Oops, I don't want to take all this off because that will make it hard to baste it. I'm just going to take off a portion of it. We know that this is flush with the top here. We want the spacing to be the same as it was on the other one. So we're going to carefully baste this down so the spacing is even along the edge of the glass. We're actually going to do the same thing we did here up here at the top. We're going to put double sided tape on and uh, right at the edge of the glass because the binding is going to go over this uh, zipper flange and then we're going to put binding on this side and we're also going to put binding on the other side matching it up just like we did up here. Now we're working on the other side and we're going to cut it a little bit long by about eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch or so so we have both sides baste it in place. We're going to take the machine and sew it just like we did with the top. Don't forget to switch your needle in the right position since we're going to sew here. We're going to do some reversing over top of the uh, uh, zipper just to make sure that that zipper stays locked in. This is pretty thick. There we go and we're going to sew to the other end and we'll do some reversing at the, at the other end as well and then we'll sew over here. In this chapter, we'll finish the raw edges at the top and the bottom. Okay, this is the trailing edge. It has no zipper. We're going to do two runs of a one inch binding on it so that we have more clear vinyl than we do canvas for our viewing pleasure. Double sided tape on both sides, bindings on both sides, sew them in the same manner, reversing at the beginning and the end. So the overlap here. We're going to cut it so that it's basically flush with the end but with a hot knife so it doesn't unravel. So hopefully this is the right length. We'll see in a second. I'm not cutting through anything that's valuable. Yeah, look at that. We're going to do that when we do this other side as well. So we have our binder set up and we're going to just sew binding on this bottom edge and I have it set up for a zigzag because that's what I sewed the rest of it. It can be straight stitch as well. Just make sure you have it pushed in at the exiting point of the binder. Do a little bit of reversing at the beginning. And we'll sew the binding onto this edge. This is the bottom edge. Okay, when we get to the bottom edge, obviously we have to trim this away, otherwise our binding is going to just run into uh, this other binding. So I'm going to trim that away and I cut my zipper so that it's flush with that edge. The reason I'm not cutting it with scissors is because uh, it'll be sewing on and it'll be a little bit harder to, to cut with scissors. But I also need to cut it so that it's perpendicular. So this is going to look tricky. If, as long as it's perpendicular to the edge of the binder, we know that it's uh, perpendicular to the, or yeah, perpendicular to the edge of the binding. So that should do it. We hope. <laughs> hope I didn't cut off too much. I cut a little bit too much off, but it'll it'll work. I'm going to move the binder out of the way now, and we're just going to reverse right over that. we go. So up here I'm going to trim away this binding and I don't want to cut into my zipper so I'm going to be careful to stay away from the zipper. I'm just going to get that off. Maybe touch that a little bit. There we go. And finally it's time to install the side curtains. Zip the side curtains onto the top. So snaps come next. Now we already had snaps for our dodger here and we could use those positions. That would put that one here, that one here. So it's still within our 
vinyl reinforced area. This one is a little bit high. It's still in the area. We could probably get away with that. But we don't have a snap down here in this corner. I could put a snap in this as well, but I don't think I need to because it's pretty much going to be zipped to it all the time. So what I want to do is I want to put a snap right there. And to do that, what I'll do is I'll just lift my fabric. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the snap about here and I'll put a mark on the surface where I want it and double check. I like that. And I'm going to use a counter bit, uh, countersink uh, bit first in my uh, fiberglass. This helps to prevent spidering. So I'm going to put it right on there and I'm just going to create a cavity. This cavity allows for great bedding using butyl tape. I need to go a little bit deeper. So there's, I need to go a little bit more because I'm going to put an 1 8 inch hole in this. There's our cavity. So this is my 1 8 inch drill bit and you could put a piece of tape on it because we don't need to drill too deep, but I am going to be using butyl tape. So even if I drill uh, deep, too deep into this, I could uh, plug it easily with butyl tape. So now that we have a cavity, this bit will go right in the middle of it and I will drill it out for the snap. I'm going to take my butyl tape and I'm going to put it on the snap and this will ooze out when I screw the snap to the boat. Now I, I typically usually do it without using an electric drill but I've done so many of these I know exactly when to stop. You should probably just use a regular screwdriver. There we go. So now that snap is in there and the butyl tape should keep us from having any uh, leaks, it's nice and secure. So what I like to do next to determine the position is I like to take chalk. Now I, I've got white vinyl under here, so if I take some uh, red chalk, blue chalk, and I put it on the uh, stud, and I pull on my canvas so I get a nice tight fit, and then I just press over top of that snap, look what happens. Bam! I know exactly where my snap needs to be installed. I like to use a press and snap tool, though there are other tools. I'm going to put the button on this end and I'm going to put the socket up here. And you just need to make sure that the button goes on the outside. So the best way to do that is to un unzip it a little bit. And there's our location. So the button has to go through the top. So as long as I make sure that my socket is right over that spot, we should be good to go. And just to press the tr trigger, Bam! Beautiful. Does it roll? No, it's nice and tight. So now let's zip it up and look at that. Nice. Now if I put a snap here, which there is one there, if I secure it here and then I come across here, that can be done but we get this little bit of a kink here. If I bypass this fastener here and if I start basically here because of this wood. If I put one right here, then I don't get that wrinkle that I have here. Now this is loose, but it's not very loose, especially if I put a snap down here at a, at a tight position. So if I pull down hard, I think that's what I'm going to do. You can do anything. You know, the shape of a boat, they vary all over the place. If I put a snap here and then I put a snap down here, that's that's okay too, it's not terrible. Uh, but I think I'm only gonna do it here. So I'm gonna pull this taut like that. So I'm gonna put it right in the middle of that, which should put it right here. So right there. And this I do not need to make, use my con, uh, my countersink bit. I'm gonna drill in here. This is wood, teak. Okay, there's no reason to use butyl tape here. We're just going to drill, put this in. There we go. And we're going to mark it with chalk. So I'm going to paint this with my red chalk. And then I'm going to pull taut. And we have our snap location. We'll install the snap with the press and snap just like we did before. We'll show you what this looks like after we get all the snaps in. Since we're drilling into teak, 
Here's another method that you can use to install fasteners or snaps. You just have to be careful because sometimes it can fray the fabric. But now I have a location for both the snap and the button. So this is our last snap and wow does it look sweet if I get out of the way. I like it. We're going to do the same thing on the starboard side. Okay, so let's say that uh, you don't want the side panels on, you just want the front curtain on. Some of you may say, well, this will flap around a lot in the wind. Well, imagine this panel gone, side panel. What I would do is I'd just put a fastener, a snap, right there into this rail. Obviously, your boat's going to be different, but that would keep this from flapping. If you wanted to, you could put a tab on here, and you could put a snap there, and you can snap down to this snap. Uh, and that would keep that from uh, flapping as well. So those are options for the corner. Um, that's it. Up next, we're going to make anti-scorching pads to protect your clear vinyl from the hot tubing. Okay, to make anti-scorching uh, pads, uh, we're going to use boat blanket material, and I just ordered samples. And that's the cheapest way to get it, so you don't have to buy a whole yard. Samples are about six by six, which is what this is, six by six. Uh, I like to cut it down to five inches, so I'm going to remove one inch. I should, I should be marking on the back side. Don't need the six inches. Now, if the six inch as far as the length is totally up to you, you can actually cut this in half or make multiples out of it. Uh, we're going to put the hook on the back side, um, and it is a good idea to actually baste it in place because when you start sewing hook on top of the boat blanket, since it has such a soft, a fuzzy back, surface uh, it wanders and the double-sided tape will help prevent that from happening. So we're going to put it right along the edge and cut the excess. Okay, So all we're going to do here is my needles already in the right position which is perfect is we're going to sew doing a little bit of reversing and we're going to sew around the perimeter. When I get to the corner, I'll bury the needle with my foot, pivot, and then I'll do the same thing at this corner. And then when we reach the uh, top, we'll come across and we will do some reversing there, and this is uh, basically done. You can see the clear vinyls touching the tubing, and this stainless gets really hot in the sun. So we'll put our pad on here and use our hook to secure it tightly, and now it is no longer touching the stainless uh, tubing. And this can be cut in half and put anywhere that it is touching, maybe even down here. The side curtains for our California Dodger are now complete. If you'd like to see how we made the top and the front curtain, click the links here or in the description below. The materials and tools list is coming up next. The entire materials list shown here is included in the California Dodger Skin Kit. This list includes all the materials required for the top, the front curtain, and the side curtains. Most of the items in this kit, besides the umbrella fabric and binding, are white. If you'd like to change those, let us know when ordering. None of the tools listed here are included in the kit. If you'd like to see more free tutorial videos that are like this, be sure to subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Give us a thumbs up if you liked this video. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.